We're going to call this uh, September meeting of Lenore County Board of Education to order. I recognize Mr. Williams for the invocation. Thank you. Let us pray. May the words spoken in this room tonight be beneficial to the students, parents, staff members, and administrators in our school system, and may we be led by the guiding principle to always base our decisions on the best interests of our young people. Amen. Amen. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, Next item is the approval of the agenda for this evening. Move to approve the agenda. A motion Good. by Mr. Smith. Second. All right, second by Mr. Davis. Any further discussion about the agenda? All in favor of approving the agenda, raise your right hand. All opposed? The agenda is approved. Next item is the board chair comments. The, I want to just remind all the board members you've received a copy tonight of our ready accountability results for the school system. Each board member should have it. This is all public information. Um, this came out last week, I believe we received it. Um, so if you want to take that home and absorb some of those numbers, uh, I think we can expect to have a presentation from the administration on this probably at our next board meeting. Uh, if the board would like more detailed presentations on these results, then uh, if you'll just let me know, we can probably arrange that. Um, but at this point, these just came out last week, so we're going to let everybody take a look at them um, and see what the pleasure of the board is about proceeding and whether you want to proceed in open meetings, if we want to schedule a work session to take a look at them, or, or however the board wants to proceed. Next item is the superintendent's announcement. I'll start by reading a thank you note from Caitlin Deans. Uh, Caitlin was uh, one of our students who took advantage of the Governor's School uh, opportunity. Um, she writes, uh, Dear Dr. Mazingo and board members, I appreciate all of the generosity and support that allowed an educational opportunity of a lifetime. I took classes in combinatorics, there'll be a quiz on that later, yeah. quantum computing, and the history of math. In addition, I met an amazing and diverse group of people. I know this experience has helped make me college ready. Thank you again for giving me an experience of a lifetime. Uh, sincerely, <coughs> Caitlin Deans, and Caitlin is a student at North Lenore High School. Uh, Governor's School is, is truly an amazing experience, and I'm uh, so glad that Caitlin took the time to let us know how much she enjoyed that. Uh, school is open, uh, and we have had uh, a good two weeks, um, even, even early college, it's been okay, uh, which you'll hear about later. You know, we really have uh, had a very smooth opening on the second day, a little, little excitement with uh, a happening in the neighborhood around Southeast School. Uh, but other than that, it's been, been pretty calm. Certainly, uh, students have been, uh, have gotten in, gotten to work. Um, we're going to see how kindergartens came in in one particular class tonight, which is, uh, I think, very interesting. A uh, little way to represent the first day for a lot of things uh, in this case. Um, but uh, thank you to all the teachers, all the principals certainly, and everyone that uh, worked tirelessly this summer to get things ready. Uh, the general public has no idea what that takes to get ready to open school, uh, but it truly takes hard work by everyone and I appreciate uh, all of the uh, LCPS employees that made that happen. Uh, on day one we did have school. We ate lunch and breakfast. And, uh, we learned and we're, we're off and running. We're going to have a great year. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Dr. Mazinko. Next item is public comment. And I understand that we do not have anyone signed up this evening. So we'll move to the presentation portion of our agenda, the first day of school presentation by Mr. Patrick Holmes. Thank you, sir. Good evening, gentlemen. So you got the narrative in front of you. Uh, first day of school, first year teacher, first year students. We thought we would add to the fun by bringing a video camera into the room and following the class around for the day. And uh, 
people at Banks were uh, generous enough to uh, <coughs> let us do that. So you know, if I can get this thing to work, I'm going to show you what it looks like. Oh, 
so many first going on there. Um, and in case you're wondering, we staggered the kindergartners in. She will have more than seven students. <laughs> she has more than seven students by now. Uh, but we bring them in a few at a time. And I always refer to kindergarten the first two weeks as the kindergarten miracle. Uh, they come in babies, and within two weeks, they're, uh, they're students. You go back, and they're sitting and learning and doing all the things they need to do. So thank you, Ms. Moore, and all of our kindergarten teachers for uh, what you do with our, our little ones. That first year is so, so important. We appreciate it. Okay. And uh, uh, thank you, Mr. Holmes, for. Uh, Enjoy it. Uh, Enjoy uh, it. Yeah, that had to be a fun day. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. And if I, if I may throw something in here, I really appreciate that. And uh, to the legislators, uh, again, that's 
shows again the importance of teacher assistance in the classroom. We had a teacher assistant here who, through doing that, decided she wanted to teach and to teach kindergarten. So again, you know, the importance of having TAs in the classroom, you know, is, is, is vital. So thank you. Next item on our agenda is the ILCPS update. Mr. Williams, thank if you, you want to introduce our guests. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, as you know, we've started our deployment of um, iPads within our one-to-one -one initiative for uh, middle schools and high schools. And the first on that list uh, for implementation was our early college. Tonight we're pleased to have with us Mr. Nick Harvey, principal of our early college high school, and Ms. Belinda McGinnis, one of his teachers who they are going to share with you um, details, uh, an update on ILCPS, specifically details about the deployment at their school, which happened, I think, in record time. The devices, not to steal their thunder, but went home the first day. Very pleased with that. Thank you, Mr. And thank you, Becky, for putting us on the agenda to follow that outstanding presentation. Great <laughs> <laughs> job, Ms. Moore. Um, first, uh, thank you, Dr. Zingo, board members, uh, Mr. Williams. Uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention uh, Stacy Colley, Stacy Colley, uh, as well, and the entire DLS team. We did deploy our iPads last week, and so far, it's been very good. I met with Mr. Charles White last week and explained to him we're in the early stages of the SAMR model, which is the S, which means substitution, and we've seen that. And I'll let Ms. McGinnis talk about that in detail. Um, but what I've seen from the administrative standpoint, uh, standpoint is our students are using the devices uh, in the, on the high school side and on the college side. Also from an administrator at my location, we do not have an intercom system. As you know, we're located on the campus of the North Community College. So from a school safety standpoint, it has made our school a much safer place. Believe it or not, all students, high school students do not have cell phones. So now we can send a mass email in the case of, in the case if there was an emergency and all of our students would get that. We're using that uh, as a communi communication tool as well, um, sending updates to our students from the principal's office. So far, so far from an administrative standpoint, um, I've seen great things. I've also seen great things in the classroom. And Ms. Belinda McGinnis is our school digital learning specialist, and she's also an outstanding math teacher. So she is uh, doing two roles this year and doing a great job so far. And I know she will continue to do an outstanding job. But Ms. McGinnis will talk to you briefly about, from the teacher standpoint, what the iPads have meant to our school in the first week. Um, our staff has hit the ground running. It's changed our classrooms in dynamic ways. Um, our, recently we had our SGA voting and they were able to do a campaign video and do the voting digitally, which has saved our class time from having to have an assembly. Um, we also have, um, we had a, a shortage of textbooks in our English classrooms and the, the kids actually were able to find a PDF version of it online and we were able to push that out to the iPad so that every student that needed a copy of that book has a copy of that book and they're able to read it at home without needing the internet. Um, we also have a teacher who is converting over to a digital interactive notebook so instead of a pencil paper writing their notes onto a paper they're now able to digitally add videos of, say, a science experiment, um, pictures from off the web, link things to different websites. So they, when they go back and they're studying it, it's a lot more meaningful when they can see those things linked into their notebooks. Um, the, we are also able to have real-time collaboration between the teachers and the students through Google Docs. Say a student puts a document through Google Doc, the teacher is able to go in and annotate and the student can immediately see what the teacher is saying and get that feedback immediately, which has been tremendous. Um, the students are also very excited and extend their appreciation as well for um, your, your support in this initiative. Um, they have asked for different thing, different apps and things, but surprisingly, overall, it's been educational. They've asked for like, dictionary.com and stuff like that. So they understand the importance of this educational tool. So as a staff and from the students, we appreciate your um, support. From the college side, our students are using the iPad 
not only in our high school classes, but also in our college classes. The feedback that we've received so far uh, has been have been very positive. Uh, students are using it to take notes. They are using to uh, do, use Moodle. Lenore Community College uses a tool called Moodle to download and push down their assignments. Uh, they are using Moodle right now. It works beautifully. There are some uh, tweaking that needs to be done. Uh, but so far, uh, we see that has been as being a positive resource as, as we move forward on the college side as well. Uh, Wi-Fi has been very strong. Thank you, Mr. Decker and your team for ensuring that the Wi-Fi has worked beautifully with these devices. We haven't seen any downtime with that, so uh, we are really off to a good start. Uh, entertain any questions that you may have. And you've got them taking the devices home from they day one. They went home the first day at our place. Uh, <laughs> as Fantastic. we explained to Stacy and Charles, at, at our place, well, we may not see students at dismissal every day because everybody's right. schedule is different. It would be hard to gather all 215 students up and find a charging location. So our students have been very responsible. Uh, we had our parent meeting. We're at 100% deployment. We did have 10, 10 students that refused devices, uh, 10 super seniors that uh, may not have a high school class this semester that have their own device. So there were 10 refusals. Uh, so we distribute 205. Um, and so we're fully deployed of everybody who wanted one. Um, every parent came out within a three day span, which is outstanding. We had a parent night in the evening, had a session in the morning, and we had 100% participation. Uh, so that, that's impressive uh, in itself to have to, that kind of participation. Uh, so parents are involved, they're engaged. They're very appreciative as well. Uh, so, good news to report out Excellent. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Just for clarity. Yes. The refusals were basically kids who had their own. Correct. Okay, so, Correct. we're not talking about a situation where somebody's going without. No, no, no. Our, our 10 refusals, um, we double checked to make sure it was not just a student refusal, that the parent was aware, and <laughs> we needed to make arrangements to go out or pick them up. It wasn't that case. They, they, were, they were, you know, didn't want the responsibility of it. So, okay. but everybody's um, on board. Everybody's on board. Right. Thank you. And you have all your super right. seniors. Your fifth. Yes. Your fifth year. Your fifth year seniors. Two. Your seniors. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions for Mr. Harvey, Ms. McGinnis? All right. We appreciate you taking the time to come uh, talk you. to us tonight. Thanks, All right. The next item is a presentation on the cost of operations for our schools by Mr. Williams. In our uh, continuing series of uh, presentations of information to you about um, facilities, in our continuing study of facilities in July, we uh, presented information on school capacity and enrollment in August. As you remember, we presented costs of utilities uh, for our schools, and this month we are continuing with the cost of regular maintenance, work orders, daily maintenance in the schools, and we calculated that uh, yearly. So we have it all together, and then I broke it out by um, grade span, elementary, middle, and high. And you have your labor hours calculated, labor costs, and that cost is, is not really, that's, there's some limited precision in calculating that about the way the program calculates it based on the type of employee who goes, is an, an electrician who goes, or is it a work order to carry a load of dirt or something like that. So you can't just divide out the numbers and come out with one hourly rate. But this does give you a guide. Materials cost as is an exact figure, as is sales tax there and total costs per school. Friend. Yes, sir. I was just looking at that one. Why is Contemptia so high? Well, it's a large it's a large facility. It's um they have they keep it in, in optimum shape and they have a lot of work orders at the school but it's a very large uh, school no it's being new that's why that's i was asking well that's a, and that's a, that's, a <laughs> and that's a good question too and that's a good question too but if they have a work order to carry say to it's logged into the system as a work order if it's to carry anything out there dirt or anything else they now have a walking track 
and um, uh, raised bed gardens and all that out there and that really isn't something that's traditionally a maintenance cost but it is part of the school but it's one of our largest campuses out there even though it is new but yes it it is correlated directly this is not like our capital projects this is correlated directly with the number of work orders submitted uh, by the school and if they um, if, if a truck has to roll to go out there to do anything it is calculated at an hourly rate for um, for these numbers here. But I mean, we could delve into that and get you an exact breakdown and look at every work order. The maintenance department tracks those and I could get you some categorized information on it. But that is something that sticks out. Generally, you'll see, when you look through them, you'll see that our newer campuses require um, fewer maintenance hours. Yeah, that's what we and, expect. And you see that generally, but that I would say that that case would be an outlier from the rest of the data when you look at it. It doesn't really correlate with the rest of it. And you'll see that here with the elementary schools. And again, most of our newer campuses, with some exceptions, notable exceptions, would be Southwood and, of course, uh, teachers, our PD center and pre-K center here. But most of our newer campuses are our elementary schools. If you looked at the total for elementary versus the middle and high school total, you would say you might have some questions about that since there are so many more elementary schools, but they have fewer hours and fewer corresponding dollars spent on them generally because they're newer. For our middle schools. And as you see, as we were talking about uh, last month with the utilities costs, most of the cost of operating a school building lies in the utilities, utilities expenses. And the other expenses apart from these would really be sort of per student expenses like for paper towels and carpets and things like toilet paper and things, light bulbs and things like that. High school expenses. And please note that I put Contentnia Savannah in both elementary and middle, and I didn't break it out per. So if you added the middle, high, and elementary up, it would actually come up to be more than the total you saw in the first. Why is the, the high schools are the three highest? Is that, is that just based on square footage? or? Well, it's a larger facility, but also remember that our high schools are among our older campuses, too. Okay. Um, the middle and high schools, some of our middle schools, with the exception of Contentnia Savannah, but our other middle schools, Woodington, Frank, uh, Rochelle, uh, plus all three of our high schools now. I mean, we used to have uh, one high school that we referred to as the newer high school, but now I think we can, we can say that all of our high schools are um, getting, getting up there in age, and the maintenance numbers uh, show that. But still, this pales sharply in comparison to some of the larger costs for the uh, capital projects. And as you can see from these numbers, really what shows pretty much is that very little is spent comparatively. And I know these are large numbers, but compared to the capital expenses for the capital projects, say new roof structures and things like that, that's where we spend most of our money. But as the years progress with these buildings, these daily maintenance numbers are going to increase. We've already seen that trend line increase over the last few years, particularly as we address, Mr. Chairman, with our high schools and with the older middle schools as well. So that's part of our planning process for looking at where we're headed as these a district numbers, with facilities. I'm sorry, do these numbers include your ground maintenance as well? Yes. Every work order, if it's to go cut grass or anything like that, is all included in here. Any questions about these uh, facilities numbers? Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mr. Williams. Next item is the financial report, Ms. Davis. <coughs> financial report reflects the year-to-date activity by providing revenue and expenditure information as to all the sources of funds received and expended by fund and purpose as of August 31st, 2014. Um, please note that the beginning of fund balance is before the final year-end audit adjusted entries are made. And I would also like for you to note that the fund balance, if you've noticed that it has gone down from last month, we did make our um, digital release payment 
and we've, the federal funds have not come down yet. We haven't been allotted our federal funds, so when those funds are allotted, we will be putting money back into our local from our federal money. So fund balance that you're saying is going up 3.9 or going down? It's, it's, gone, down. Down. it's, it's down. gone down now, but it's coming back. It'll come back up once we receive our federal okay. allotments. Okay. We'll be putting money back into our local. Yeah, the, the local fund balance took the full hit on the lease payment that was made, uh, and but a lot of that money is going to come out of federal funds. So that money will be replaced in the local fund when that happens. Mr. Chairman, sure. if the chair will indulge me just a minute, following up on the previous cost of operation. Yes, sir. Sure. Can I ask you to do me a favor, Mr. Davis? I'll try. <laughs> in reviewing the 2014-15 budget audit, looking at instruction. I believe it was 5,000. The program code was 5,000 for instruction. All the 5,000 codes. So okay. it's instructional services, yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Neither one of us have a calculator, but just in general, according to the audit, we spent somewhere in the neighborhood of $56 million in that program. Right. I was trying to conceptualize out of that $56 million, roughly, and this is where you can check. We're spending $312,000 per day in 180 days for instruction. And if you take that off to the term of the teachers, the 215, we're spending somewhere around $260,000 a day. System. Can you see we're in the ballpark on that? Can you see if I'm in the ballpark on those numbers? Check? Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Are we still operating without a state budget? That would be what correct. is the status of the budget? Do we, uh, do we know that? We, there was an article today in the end of I believe, that said that they were working towards a uh, compromise to come out with a budget this week. Mm -hmm. So whether, we'll see, uh, they worked, at least some of the legislators worked through the holiday to try to, to reach a compromise and put the budget out this week. That's their goal, anyway. Is there any other questions for Ms. Davis on the financial report? <clears throat> All right. Thank you, Ms. Davis. Thank you. Next, we'll move to the action portion of the agenda. Is this kinetic physical therapy and wellness contracts? Is that Ms. Roach? <laughs> it's Ms. Roach. <clears throat> I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly or if it's just misspelled on my agenda. No, you have it correct. Good okay. afternoon. Okay. <laughs> I think you have a report already uh, before mm -hmm. you on Kinetic Physical Therapists and Wellness Contract. They offer um, physical therapy, occupational therapists, occupational therapy assistants, and we are looking at two speech therapists to contract with them also. Any contracts above $100,000 come before the board for your approval. Uh, these are uh, usual expenditures. Uh, they are into uh, fairly large contracts, is, is how uh, Ms. Roach is uh, approaching getting his job done. There's some high dollar people. Mm -hmm. These related services are required based mm -hmm. on IEP for exceptional students. How, how many currently do we, students do we have currently that require these services? I would have to look that up for you, but I can give it to you. I don't know it by heart, just off the top of my head. Are these the same providers we've contracted with in the past? Is this your this renewing is a from new year to year? This provider that we're using that is cheaper than what we've had in the past. And since okay. his rate was a lot cheaper than some of the other agencies we've used in the past, it really is a saving for us. Okay. Do the we have for mm -hmm. Uh, related services have gone up because it is hard to find occupational therapists, speech therapists, 
and the rates were used to be around fifty dollars an hour. Now they're up to seventy-five to a hundred dollars an hour. Wow. So I look for the lower end in terms of contract. Uh, it's a good career career opportunity for some of our children if they're interested. Oh, certainly. Certainly. <laughs> too late for me to go back. <laughs> <laughs> Never too late. Are we familiar with this company's work? I mean, yes, I'm very familiar. Okay. I've worked with them a number of years, so I Excellent. know the person <coughs> that worked with them. That was going to be my question. We were yeah. expecting the same quality of uh, probably services. Probably better quality than better. we've been getting in the past. Mm. Better quality for less money. Yes. Other questions? This is all federal money anyway, right? Is it? Yes. It's federal. Yes. What little they give us, yes. Yeah, I see Abbott yeah, looking, so I figured. <laughs> yeah. These are actually two separate contracts you're presenting. Is that, yes. is that the way it's it is? Right. Right. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> All right, any questions for Ms. Roach? Have a motion to approve the contracts. So moved. Motion made by Mr. Nobles. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Mr. King. And I'm assuming that's a motion to approve both contracts together. Right. All right. Thank you, sir. Is there any further discussion about the contracts? <coughs> and we'll call it for a vote. All in favor, raise your right hand. Contracts are approved. Thank you, Ms. Roach. Thank you. Next item is some surplus, surplus property, Mr. Williams. Thank you. Uh, two of our departments tonight are, are bringing forth uh, surplus or bringing forth property uh, for your consideration for declaring uh, surplus uh, for sale or uh, salvage or sale. Uh, Child Nutrition has two gar garbage disposals, one outdated iPad, uh, 22 outdated cash registers. Transportation Department has a list of vehicles that you see in your. Uh, packet and we are requesting to um, sell all of this any of this property that we can all of it that we can with the uh, proceeds to go to these two uh, respective uh, departments and uh, <coughs> any that we can't sell to just um, recycle for some um, compensation are the vehicles uh, being sold to the salvage yard uh, no he's actually hoping to sell mr. Mitchell's hoping to sell those to uh, to individual buyers individual. That's good. Salvage yard not paying much of no <laughs> I see most of these vehicles are dating from the late 80s to early 90s right mm -hmm. there right with 25 exception. plus years old sure yeah. except for one yeah except for one. <laughs> right is there one <laughs> two is there two of them? 201 they just got a high mileage or just one out? They were uh, <laughs> <laughs> the, the one that's uh, is high mileage and plus is, uh, they have a lot of repair problems, issues. It so gets to that tipping point where the, the repairs on it would outweigh the value. <coughs> We better not say too much. We are going to sell this. But these are in great shape. <laughs> <laughs> Let me not speak too soon. <laughs> For all those potential buyers out there, these are <laughs> Those are, after all, road miles. So tonight we're bringing this to you for your consideration for declaring these items uh, surplus for uh, sale or salvage. Any question about the surplus property? Do we have a motion to declare the property surplus? Motion to approve the list of surplus property for disposal with the proceeds returning to the programs. Motion made by Mr. Hill. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Davis. Any further discussion on the surplus property? <coughs> All right, we'll call it for a vote. All in favor, raise your right hand. Property is declared surplus. Next item is about three out-of-state field trips. Mr. Williams. Yes, sir. Tonight we are bringing forth for your consideration three out-of-state uh, field trips. Uh, two from Kenton High School, the JROTC program. 
Skill is requesting to go to Hampton, Virginia on September the 12th, 2015, and to uh, Dutchester, South Carolina, October 3rd, 2015, both for uh, drill competitions, um, drill and conditioning competitions. And uh, South Lenore High School band students are requesting to travel to Orlando, Florida on March 28th through the 31st, 2016. Thank you, Mr. Williams. Move to approve um, group to three, Kenston High, South Lenore, the two Kenston High and one South Lenore out of state field trip. Motion by Mr. Smith. Second. Second by Mr. Hill. Any further discussion on the out of state field trips? <coughs> Therefore, all in favor, raise your right hand. Field trips are approved. Next item will be a motion to go into closed session. I move that the North County Board of Education go into closed session under North Carolina General Statute 143-318.11 to prevent disclosure of confidential personnel files to consult with the board's attorney in order to preserve the attorney-client privilege and consider matters relating to initial employment of an individual employee. Motion made by Mr. Hill. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Nobles. All in favor of going into closed session, raise your right hand. We are now in closed session. We're back on the air. We're back on? All right. Thumbs up. We're back in open session. Do we have a motion to approve the personnel report with the addendum? Motion to approve the personnel report with the addendum. Motion by Mr. Smith. Second. Second by Mr. Hill. All in favor of approving the personnel report with the addendum, raise your right hand. It's unanimous. Second. Do we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. <laughs> motion by Mr. Anderson. Second. Second by Mr. Nope. All in favor of adjournment, raise your right hand. We are now adjourned.